I'm Dr. Brett DePoister with the Aquarium Vet, and in this video, I'm going to go over another common problem with new tank syndrome, and that's nitrite toxicity. Nitrite is less toxic compared to ammonia, but when present, it still has a direct impact on the fish's ability to transport oxygen throughout its body. An affected fish will be lethargic, they'll be at the surface of the water with rapid breathing, and in severe cases, they might even be gasping at the surface for air. The etiology or reason why this occurs is because the nitrite is readily absorbed through the gills into the bloodstream. It then oxidizes the iron within the hemoglobin of the fish's red blood cells. And when this occurs, oxygen cannot actually efficiently bind to the hemoglobin, reducing the amount of oxygen that's available to the fish. Now, normally oxygenated hemoglobin results in red coloration of the blood, while the nitrite affected hemoglobin is brown in coloration. As a result, the fish that are affected by nitrite poisoning typically have pale tan or brown gills, resulting in the name of nitrite poisoning, commonly called brown blood disease. Ideally, the nitrite level in our aquariums should be zero, and that shouldn't be allowed to go over 0.1 ppm, as some species of fish are very sensitive to levels that are higher than this. Even chronic or low-grade exposure of nitrites can result in anemia, or a decreased amount of available red blood cells, and it can also cause just a generalized depression of the immune system, leading to secondary health concerns such as bacterial or parasitic infections. In aquariums that are still cycling, nitrites generally become elevated after the ammonia levels start to drop, which is typically one to three weeks of starting that new tank. The level of nitrites will continue to increase over the next few weeks until that nitrous spira and other nitrifying bacteria start metabolizing the nitrites into nitrates. Now, prevention is the best method of avoiding nitrite toxicity. This includes properly cycling the biofilter before adding fish to the aquarium, regular maintenance of mature aquariums, and of course, regular water testing of the water quality in your aquarium. In the unfortunate event of fish being affected by nitrites, the same steps that we covered in the ammonia toxicity lesson should be followed. And these include performing a water change of 25 to 50% of the water volume to dilute the nitrate that's present, Next, we want to reduce the amount of food being fed or even stop feeding altogether for a few days. This will significantly reduce the ammonia being produced by the fish, which in turn reduces the amount of nitrites being produced. Next, we want to ensure that the water is well aerated to keep the water well oxygenated. This is beneficial for two reasons. First, it actually helps the fish to be able to breathe, but it's also really important for the bacteria involved with the nitrification process. As we discussed in the ammonia toxicity lesson, the addition of beneficial bacteria cultures available at your local pet store or aquarium will also help speed up that cycling process and reduce the nitrates. Lastly, in freshwater aquariums, we can add sodium chloride such as sea salt or table salt at a dose of 10 milligrams per liter of water for every one milligram of nitrites per liter that's present in the aquarium. This will reduce the toxic effects on the fish as this reduces the amount of nitrites that the fish actually absorb through their gills. As the population of beneficial bacteria that consumes the nitrites increases, the nitrites will start to naturally decrease in the aquarium and clinical signs of nitrite toxicity will resolve. Now, as I mentioned before, this is completely preventable, and I cannot stress enough the importance of regular testing of your aquariums to catch anything that's gone wrong or while you're monitoring the cycling of your aquarium. So that covers nitrite toxicity. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next lesson.